Yeah. yeah. All right. We all right. We ready? All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome. Welcome Thank to our second much. installment of Black History Month series. Are featuring our tastemakers and vendors of Mariano's. My name is Aaron Oliver. I will be your master of ceremonies for the evening. Um, I also have Amanda and Sarah, both from Mariano. They will be helping me out tonight and moderating as well. Just real quick, a little about me. I'm the founder and owner of Season and Blessed, a full-time business dedicated to providing Black-owned businesses the respect, the celebration, the everything, just everything, all, everything all Black, you know? <laughs> it's a Black History Month. We're doing all things Black. And I provide that same platform to give them and uplift them 24-7, 365. Um, I'm honored to work with Mariano's in expanding that platform and continuing that narrative year round. And I've been very, very blessed to be in this position. So thank you. Shout out to y'all. Um, tonight, we are honored to be joined by Chef Brian Jupiter of Ida May and Frontier, both in Wicker Park. If you've never been, I suggest you go get the chicken. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be showing us how to make our um, his crawfish husk puppies. And We'll just be discussing a few things, like you know what he's been up to. You know they had their. And if you've never seen him before, go for like Mardi Gras. He decks that place out. Frontier, I mean, um, anime, decks it out. It's awesome. Like one big New Orleans party, definitely worth going if you can't make it to New Orleans. And I don't think we can since we're all staying at home safely. So, <laughs> <laughs> with that, before we get started, I just want to go over a few rules. You know, we have the chat button in the middle, so ask as many questions as you want. We will be able to look through and ask them as they pop up on our, our screen. Um, this is a positive and safe space. No negative comments allowed. We will be watching. And this is being recorded. So if you do not want to be recorded, be sure to turn off that little screen in the bottom left hand of your corner. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Chef Q. I think I will. I think he's looking quiet. Hold on. Yeah, you there? Uh oh, I think you got some good difficulties. Chef, hello. Mm -mm. So you might be a little frozen. Um, I'm gonna check. Hold on. Maybe he's gonna buzz back in on it. It got, he, it got so it's so cold outside. His screen, his screen froze. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's what happened. I think that's what happened to me last time. So I had to flip between the phone and the computer last event. <laughs> so while we wait. I'm watching while I get ready for it's okay, Bree. No worries. <laughs> I know we missed it. I missed it. I wish I saw what happened. And if you oh, I think he's back. Okay, yeah, here he's he goes. Back. He's back. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, now we can. There you are. All right, yeah, it looks like we got to stay on the phone. My computer doesn't really want to act right anymore. Can you all see me? We did some crawfish. Got you. All right. <laughs> so, We're done. how's everyone doing? Thank you very yeah, much. Good. And uh, so, yeah, so we're doing crawfish hush puppies today. And I love demoing recipes that you can make your own. And so like I've seen some of the comments where people are saying that, you know, I, I'm using salmon, I'm using, you know, uh, shrimp or, you know, we, we switch it up all the time. And so it's a good base recipe to have. It's very easy to make uh, and it's easy to make your own as well. Uh, bacon's another one that goes really well with these hush puppies. Uh, but it's Black History Month. It happens to be Mardi Gras season as well. Uh, and so we're doing some crawfish. And you all should have the recipe for those that are making it on uh, with me now uh, from Mariano's. Uh, but you start with your dry ingredients. And so we have some cornmeal as well as some flour. I think it's a cup of cornmeal, like a half a cup of flour. We have some buttermilk. And that is the only wet ingredient that we're adding uh, to this recipe. 
fresh corn. It is winter time, so if you can't find fresh corn, um, there is a good uh, frozen option over at Mariano's that'll work well in this recipe, especially with it being something that's in a fried item like this. Uh, it won't be as bad. Uh, we have one egg that's beaten. Some bacon soda and bacon powder, and that's what makes our uh, hush puppies rise. Some kosher salt. A little green onion or scallion. Some chopped parsley. And then we have some Cajun spice. With Cajun spice is a mixture of like cayenne, paprika, it has some salt in it, garlic powder, some onion powder. Uh, so just a really good like season all seasoning. Um, Chef, Felicia asked, do you thaw the frozen corn? No, you don't have to. Okay. Now, the only thing about not thawing that frozen corn is that when you do fry them, if you fry them right away, um, there's a possibility that you're going to get a little bit more popping, you know what I mean, just from that, mm. that corn thawing in the fryer. Right. Um, Monique asked, is there a good substitute for baking powder? If for baking don't... powder? No. Yes. Um, no. Okay. I don't know that that, I don't know the exact uh, sub uh, off the top of my head right now, but it's a uh, cream of tartar and baking soda that would make a sub okay. for, uh, for baking powder. Um, and so okay. you can Google that too, and it, it'll give you a conversion for it. I just don't want to give you the wrong one uh, off the top of my head. But yeah, that's the only thing that I know of to, to sub out for that. Okay. Right, and so you just want to mix that. And we haven't added our crawfish yet, but crawfish are the only thing that we haven't added. And so you don't want to overmix because overmixing is going to make them very like tough and doughy, where we want them to be more light mm -hmm. and fluffy. And so mm -hmm. now we're going to fold in our crawfish or whatever uh, you know meat you decided to uh, add into it. You. You could keep these, uh, you know, vegetarian. Uh, and then, you know, with multiple options out there uh, for, uh, you know, milk substitutes and egg substitutes, uh, this recipe could be turned into a vegan recipe uh, fairly easily. Okay. That's definitely good then, to know. So one thing I didn't talk about yet is oil. <laughs> so you should have your oil preheating right now. and I like to fry it about 350 on these, uh, but, uh, you know, fryers are very temperamental. Um, you know, if you don't have a thermometer uh, to take the temperature of your oil, um, I suggest testing a little piece of your uh, hush puppy batter into it before you go full on with all of them. Uh, and then if it gets brown really, dark, uh, really quickly, then you know, let your oil cool down some, turn the temp down, uh, because those will still be very raw you know, in the middle. And so that is that. And, and so you should be looking at something like this. If you all can see, you know, um, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, you know, fairly thick batter. Uh, and we got a, a nice bit of crawfish mixed in there. And so these would be great. Um, if you want to do these ahead of time, you know, you can make them a day or two in advance, just put them in an airtight container, keep them in your refrigerator. Uh, until you're ready to start frying them off. Uh, but I probably wouldn't go too much further in advance than about two days. Now, okay. we're going to get some. Sarah of these. Um, asked, How do you know if you've overmixed it? You don't until you eat it. <laughs> you just need them. You just want it to be fully incorporated. <laughs> you know? And so you. Uh, you know, it, you really don't have to overthink it too much. Uh, just just fold it in until it's incorporated and call it that. You shouldn't have any, you know, you shouldn't see any more dry flour or dry cornmeal um, in your batter. It should be pretty wet. Okay. Now for scooping. Uh, um, also, Queen of Starbucks. Let me see. 
Oh, the Queen of Starbucks, I'm sorry, they asked you, um, could you substitute dried parsley for fresh parsley? And if you can, yeah. how would you? You you, you can. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of dried parsley um, because it's one herb in particular that, that takes on a, a very different flavor when it's dry um, than, than mm -hmm. fresh. Uh, but you can definitely use it in a pinch. One thing about dry herbs um, is that it's it's worth the extra money that it costs for you know different brands or upgraded brands or whatever that you'll see. Mm -hmm. And if they're brighter green, that's normally a better thing for uh, for a dry you know parsley uh, than if you get them in a more more like brownish. That normally means they're a little bit older. Um, and so try to stick with the fresh. If you have to sub out the the dry, just try to get a higher quality and dry. Okay. All right, and so to scoop uh, and to get to the frying phase, you know, I like to use an ice cream scoop. You know, this is a pretty small one. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing anything much bigger than this one here, if you all can see that, um, because you run the risk of your outside cooking, your inside still being, uh, you know, raw or slightly undercooked. Uh, and so, you can also use a spoon. Don't have an ice cream scoop. That's not a problem. Uh, using a spoon, but when you use your spoon, uh, so let me grab one really quick. Alright. So if you're going to use a spoon, like like you'll find, you know, at, at our house. Um, I prefer to use one that's a little bit more pointed, um, more of a soup spoon instead of like a bouillon style spoon. Um, and you'll need two. And so what you would want to do is, since you don't have a scoop to press the button and release, you're going to use your other spoon to knock off the, the hush puppy batter into the fryer. Now, you want to make sure that when you're putting that, your hush puppies into your fryer, that you're not too high up away from the grease so it doesn't splatter back on you, you know? And so you'll see when we add some over here uh, to our deep fryer, um, you know, we almost get all the way into the fryer uh, just as a, a safety precaution. Um, CP asked, how many tablespoons is in that, uh, the ice cream scoop you showed earlier? How many what? How many tablespoons is the ice cream scoop that you had earlier? Um, CP wanted to know how many tablespoons is that? Uh, it is, or ounces are. Uh, but I want to say that this is a two ounce scoop. Two ounce scoop, okay. Uh, right. Linda wanted to know can this recipe be made in the crawfish beignets? Um, no, no, because um, these are just, it's just a different type of fritter. So, uh, Beignets should never be crawfish, in my opinion, and I'm from New Orleans, born and raised, um, because it's it's based, a beignet is a donut. Um, if you want a fritter mm. beignet, uh, fritter crawfish, uh, do it all day long. You know, this would be more of a crawfish fritter than a crawfish beignet. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's just a little different. But both of them would be kind of in that, you know, fried dough family. Um, you know what I mean? Got you. Yeah. All right. So I think we can get started with frying a few. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to move yes. you all closer. Hopefully, you all can see a little bit better what I'm doing here in the fryer. Can you all see that? Can you all see that? Yep. I can see the fryer. Yes. Yep. All right. Yep. So. Okay. I want you all to be able to see inside of the fire. All right, let me see. Don't fry the phone now, chef. So, <laughs> trying to be a film director and fry uh, some hush puppies at the same time. 
when I take my uh, my batter, I get very close to my oil and then release. And you don't want to move your pan, you don't don't move your uh, your basket around at all, um, because they're going to kind of settle at the bottom. And when they settle at the bottom, you need to give them a second for them to to kind of set up. If you shake your pan, okay. you shake your basket or your pan too soon, then they they could stick at the bottom and break. Okay. Hmm. Now I will ask you this, Chef. I don't personally have one. I think I, I said I do have one. I'll take that back. Um, can these be air fried? You know, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not too familiar with air fryers. Uh, I, I've only used one uh, a couple of times, and it was for more like fried chicken. Okay. Oh, a Angie answered. She said no. The batter cannot be wet. Oh, no, uh, no, that. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. Well, Angie yeah, said you could. No, I, yeah, I, I thought that it might be a little difficult, but I wasn't completely sure. Okay. All righty. And so, once they start to come up and float, you want to give them a little time. And the way that we're going to check them is that we'll just pull one out and um, and stick a toothpick in it and just see if we come out clean. You can flip them while they're in the oil. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that I love about these is that when you talk about different dipping sauces and things like that, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of different things work with it. And so if you want to go with a traditional tartar sauce, if you did have a seafood item in it, tartars work really well. Uh, remoulades work really well. Uh, a simple garlic aioli is also quite tasty with this. All right. So I just pull those up. These are nice and golden brown. Oh, this is good. And as you all get used to making them, you get a feel for how 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 done they are because they they really start to feel a lot lighter in weight um, once they're fully cooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those are tasty. So great for appetizers, you know, great for, you know, different little gatherings that you may have, small at the house. Uh, but, you know, a very simple recipe that I, I in particular love a lot. And, um, you know, feel free to try different variations of it. Um, another little secret about this recipe is that you can do little pancakes with this. Um, like just on a griddle or in a pan, like you would do your, your breakfast pancakes um, and serve them mm -hmm. as like a nice little savory uh, pancake uh, to go along with a, 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 another seafood dish. You know, if we did something like a roasted salmon with, you know, uh, crawfish corn cakes uh, or something like that. Uh, so Ooh, uh, definitely good. keep this recipe in your, in your uh, book uh, and, and feel free to mess with it. That sounds really good. Um, Brie asked, is this a family recipe? She just wants to know, like, do you have any like background on it or do you just like kind of create it? Well, this is the thing, you know, the, 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 I've taken my family's uh, cornbread recipe and I've made a bunch of different variations of different dishes that are somewhat cornbreadish. And uh, this is one of those, you know? And so 
Uh, I, I really like to build, oh, Langostinos, fancy, fancy. I saw that message pop up. Um, somebody's using Langostinos in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love Langostinos. Oh, um, oh wow. But, you know, I, I do like to take a lot of a lot of the things that you know my grandmother used to do, uh, and you know just make them a little different, uh, you know, and you know just restaurant them up a touch, and uh, you know, but you still have the core and the flavor uh, and 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 the soul. Got you, got you. Now I know we do have some um, some of our guests cooking at home. Uh, uh, CP said his. Their batter turned out super thin. What did they do wrong, and how can he fix it? Or they fix it? I'm sorry. They say it turned out super thick. Um, thin, super yeah. thin. They want to know what happened and how can they fix it. Um, they put too much liquid. How much? How much? Um, how much buttermilk did they add? A a a cup. Well, that's not the issue. How much flour did they have? CP. <laughs> Half a cup. One cup of cornmeal. Huh? They said they said they added a cup of buttermilk, half a cup of flour, and one cup of cornmeal. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, that that definitely definitely shouldn't have been thin by any means at all. Was there any other liquid hmm. added to that? Maybe did he said no. Uh did it need to did it need to fit a bit? Like to get the aeration or maybe overcooked or I don't know. No, hmm. no, I mean yeah, I'm I'm really puzzled by that. Um uh, because yeah, I mean it's it's not enough liquid you know, in that recipe to make it loose, um, unless your dry was off. Oh, okay. I think you got an answer. It was low fat or fake buttermilk. Oh, so yeah. So you're gonna get that's a thinner, a lot thinner of a product. Um, where where you get, I mean, low fat. I, I mean, I use low fat cultured buttermilk. Um, you know, and so. Looks a little bit like this, you know, and so it's it's very pretty thick though, you know. And if anything, you know, people would add, would tell me that they, you know, it came out thicker than they thought it would. Um, but that's that's what you're mm -hmm. looking for. Um, and so yeah, the only liquid that went into here was one egg, and then yeah, you can add more cornmeal mm -hmm. to it, but you're gonna start running the risk of it getting a little like doughy. Yeah, it, it'll be a little heavier than light. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> why no, it's not that? Really, yeah, uh, switching gears. Yeah, because I actually, yeah, yeah. I, I made I made this one here right off of the the recipe as well. Um, and then if you all have, you will probably have a little leftover. Uh, batter, um, so just airtight container that. I haven't tried freezing it before. I don't know how that would would would, would come back, but um, if you want to take a little bit of it and, and try it out, freezing it, thaw it, and, and fry some off, um, then you could give that a shot as well. Let me know if that works. That's actually a good question. I was wondering, like, maybe like with the ice crystals, I know it'd probably be a little bit more popping or anything of that nature if you freeze it. No, I'm not sure, so. That's a good well, question. yeah, I think I think if you froze the, the batter itself and then you thaw the batter out, it it should be okay. okay. Um, or you just share all your hush puppies with your friends and family and make make a new batch every time. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, so switching gears, uh, with the recipe, what else do you have going on? Like, what have you been doing since you know the pandemic? I know you had to pivot. And do a lot of um, takeout and carry out. I know I, I came a few times to anime myself. I we were doing it when it was still warm. Um, yeah. So what have y'all been up to over at Anime and Frontier? Well, you know, it's uh, you know, we we've continued to to try to you know stay creative and you know stay as positive as possible. 
uh, during this time. And so we have a bunch of different meal kits that we've offered at both Ina and Frontier. Um, and as well as, you know, uh, we have a, a shrimp boil that's coming up this Tuesday for, for Mardi Gras Day um, at Frontier. Uh, we're doing a crawfish boil at Ina May on Tuesday. Um, and we have a, a, quite a few different drink kits. You know, we have a hurricane kit. We have a whole, you know, absent cocktail experience that you all can pick up from Ina May um, as well. So, you know, as we, you know, prepare for, you know, a little bit more opening and, and welcoming the customers back into our establishments, um, you know, we wanted to stay, you know, relevant and wanted to stay in front of folks um, for, you know, the time that we had to do it virtually or uh, via takeout and delivery. Right. Okay. What's up? Um, yeah, definitely. Like I said, if y'all never been to um, anime, like go get everything. I'm just telling you now, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I might sound a little biased, but it's true. Get everything, <laughs> taking the decor, taking the music, taking all the decorations, get a snow cone. Well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe not a snow. That's a little trigger word right now. Snow, snow and cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe so, <laughs> a little triggered by that, but um, definitely just it's a. They're both frontier and anime. I remember um, meeting you, Chef Ju, when I went to um, Frontier, and you had yeah. an event with uh, Chef Eric, Chef Eric yep. Williams of Virtue, and yeah, I remember one. seeing everything. Uh, the the alligator is what really. Got me off. I was like, oh my God, look at this. this is so cool. <laughs> it was really awesome. Um, so definitely a place to check out both roast restaurants. Yes, please do. You know, we're changing the menu up over at Ina May um, pretty soon. And so, you know, we're going to have some new fresh flavors, uh, you know, for you all to, to try out. And so, you know, hopefully I will be able to see you all dining in. Um, but if not, then, you know, like I said, we have a we have quite a few options um, for you all to make us your your and put us in your dinner plans um, at least one one of these days during the week on the weekend coming up. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amanda, do you have anything to add or any questions? Um, I see everyone just writing in the chat that they're making it. I'd love to, I mean, it'd be fun if we could see some finished products. I mean, yeah, uh, please, obviously please. the ones Jute made are, look delicious. Uh, I hope that you all tag me, uh, tag some yeah. photos of them on uh, Instagram for me uh, at Chef Jute. I'd love to see what you all uh, made and how they came out. That will be definitely tagged. I want to see. I, I'm not able to make anything tonight, but I definitely want to hit up this recipe <laughs> very soon. You should come, um, Aaron. I'll make some. Right? I'll make some extra, and I'll share them with you. Sounds like a plan. I'm all for it. <laughs> Sarah, maybe you too. <laughs> so, all right. All right. I well, think. I, yeah. Well, with that, we thank you. Thank you, Chef Fire and Jupiter of Frontier and Anime for sharing your sharing your recipe with us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, feel free to, like I said, post meeting. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Demariano's tab, me, Season of Blessed. You can find me at seasonofblessed.com on all platforms. Chef Brian Jupiter, again of Anime, thank you so much. For this no problem. Moment, thank you. And I appreciate you. you very much. And stay safe, stay home, and stay healthy. All right, have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Oh, was someone showing something, Sarah? Yeah. Was someone going to show something? <laughs>